Welcome to the Wealth Genius Podcast. The Wealth Genius Podcast. Strategies for multifamily real estate investing, mindset, community, success. The Wealth Genius Podcast with your host, the godfather of real estate, Alfonso Quadra, who has expansive experience in business and massive success as a real estate investor. The Wealth Genius Podcast. Let's dive into today's episode. Woo! I am here <laughs> with some superstars. My friends, thank you for coming. I'm so excited to talk to you guys. Uh, you guys are so inspiring. Do you know when we met? 2019. Wow. Before all the craziness. Yes. <laughs> Those were the best yeah. days. I don't know. There, you can usually tell when people uh, are glowing and, you know, and when lights go off in their in their mind, they, the light bulb goes off. And, and I've been uh, keeping close tabs on your career and everything you've done. Um, you've recently closed a deal. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And um, so there's a lot to talk about here. And so I want to go kind of uh, maybe introduce yourselves and um, kind of what you do. And then I want to go deeper than that, kind of like your backgrounds and whatnot. And then we're going to go into the good stuff. Like, you know, and I told you I have some uh, questions about uh, what you do as well. So I'll start over here. Uh, so my name is Marie France. I'm French Canadian from Quebec. I've been living in Ontario forever now. Um, been working um, for Hydro for 25 years this year. So I'm wow. being celebrated this you're, year. You're that person that sends yes. all those bills. Um, there was a time in my life when um, I couldn't keep a job more than a few years and then finally found the right job for me. So now I'm ready for the next right thing for me. Um, I'm ready to retire and I'm ready for... Um, I'm ready to start my life nice. all over again. I love that. And sometimes the word retirement sometimes has this like international meaning, like you're going to stop and you're just going to like do nothing for the rest of your life. Oh, no, no. But but I have a feeling that uh, <laughs> you're going to ramp things up. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yes, <laughs> no, yes. I, I, I love that. Yeah. So thank you so much for having us here. Um, it's a great honor. Um, I look up to you. And so this is a great experience. Um, so I'm Shanna. I, uh, am not only a psychotherapist, which you had alluded to, uh, but I'm also a real estate investor. I help people who are busy and are tired of living paycheck to paycheck get out of that cycle. One question that I had about uh, psychotherapy is you have obviously some skill sets and tools mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, dealing with people. Mm -hmm. Does, how does that help you in the real estate world? So I have decided to uh, manage our most recent acquisition myself. And I've discovered I'm a really good property manager. And mm. I think it's because I'm so good with people. So I put people at ease. They tell me a lot. Um, one time somebody told me it was a really good idea to show up as the property manager <laughs> and uh, I kept that information. Yes, good. Uh, and so they do, they share so much information and I think I do a good job of making people open up yeah. um, through that. And so I get to learn a lot about the tenants. Well, uh, the reason I asked that question is because my my wife is a funeral director. That's mm -hmm. a kind of her, her background and mm -hmm. she transitioned into property management. Mm -hmm. And those, the people skills, mm -hmm. right? And uh, most people don't understand coming into real estate, how much a people business it really is. Oh, yeah. Everything's and, people. It and, is. you know, in terms of dealing with investors and, and sellers and buyers and tenants and trades. And so what is the one skill that you think, uh, you know, or tool that you use in terms of dealing with people? Is it, you know, is it something that comes from your your background? I think it actually might be something that like I've always been good at, which is putting myself in other people's shoes. Mm. So when people talk to me, I can I can relate to them. And it's also one of the reasons why I took a while to become a psychotherapist, uh, because I was worried I'd put myself too much into people's shoes, and then I would be crying instead of them crying. Uh, so I took a while to do that, but I'm I'm able to put myself in other people's situations and so I can empathize with them. 
And what what led you to that career? Like, what 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 did you want to do that? Uh, I started actually counseling people on the schoolyard at recess. Wow! Uh, so I would see a child who was sitting there crying, and so I'd go over and ask them questions, find out what was going on. Usually, there was some sort of interaction with another classmate, and uh, then I'd go to the other the other person and talk to them and figure out their side mm-hmm. of the story. And I go back and forth, even if it took multiple recesses. Yes. Um, until they were playing together again. I love that. Yeah. And so now you guys are in real estate. Yes. <laughs> yes. And real estate entrepreneurs. And so like why real estate and how did that all come about? Like she mentioned, living paycheck to paycheck has been my life. And when I retire, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. I want to live life to to the fullest. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to have an amazing life. But more than that... I want to leave a legacy to my family and she's family Mm -hmm. and she gave me four beautiful grandchildren. So I want them to be able to do what they (laughs) want, not what they have to do. Yes. You know, we've been raised that you have to get a job. You have to do this. You have to do that. No, we don't have to. We we have to try and change that mindset, and and it's it starts with us. Yes, I Otherwise, love I love changing it to a question, or or, or changing the, the the statement to I get to, mm-hmm. right? And then because when you say I get to, that empowers you, mm-hmm. right? When you when you have to get a job, when you have to pay your bills, when you have to, you know, uh, pay your mortgage, then it's like, you know, you're giving your power away. Yes. But when you get to, that that's liberating. Yes. Right? I like paid mortgages. <laughs> yeah, because you get to live. <laughs> yes. And I'm using somebody else's money to do yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. So so in what, why did you get into the, the into the real estate? Uh, so I grew up um, with a mother who was a teenage mother. And um, I saw her work very, very hard, um, which meant little time spent with us. I realized that that cycle was starting to continue in my own family and that my time was going towards providing for my family instead of spending time with my family. That's not what I wanted to be doing. I wanted to spend time with the loved ones. I love that. I mean, it's definitely when you can do something and be emotional about it, uh, it's meaningful, right? It's, there's, there's more depth behind it. Right. And, Time is the most valuable asset that we mm-hmm. have. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Is it ever? And it's mm-hmm. short. And the older we get, it's like, okay, today's Monday. But yesterday was Monday. Like days just go so fast. It's like time is fly is flying by. Yeah. And if you could be present, you can have more time. Mm-hmm. Most people are not really willing to be present. Mm. Yeah. Um, I love real estate because of that reason. It allows, it gives you the time. And when you're not worried about things, then you can be present, right? It's yes. just like, you know, when, when I was a kid, you talked about a recess. Uh, it was like 15 minutes. Within 15 minutes, I could I would go outside, play soccer. Um, I got a girlfriend, broke up with that girlfriend, had my first kiss, <laughs> all within 15 minutes. Now it takes me 15 <sighs> minutes to tie my shoes. I mean, <laughs> you know that, those, because you're so present as a kid, you know, time just slows down, right? And I think is the the worry about, you know, the end of the month is coming that, you know, gives us a bit of anxiety. And, you know, we're either uh, worried about the past or worried about the future. And we're never really present, which we can enjoy the time now, enjoy the time with the kids, enjoy the, the time with the grandkids. And so time is such a beautiful gift what do you like the most about real estate? Something I never thought I would say, I'm an introvert. Mm. Um, meeting people. <laughs> Believe it or not, meeting people. Nice. Getting out of your, being forced to get out of your comfort zone. Yes. And I'm getting better and better and better at it every time I go to a function. And you know what? I have to thank you for that. Mm. If it wasn't for you, I would still be in my shell and not meeting anybody and not doing anything. So thank you. You changed my life. 
Well, we're we're out here. Yeah, now you're on a podcast. <laughs> like you're out here in, with, with no uh, no parachute. <laughs> nope, and I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, for for the people that uh, you know that are introverts out there, what is the biggest piece of advice? Right? Because you know I love people. I can't imagine a world without people. Like I, you know, COVID pretty much almost killed me. Oh. Right. Because uh, I need people interaction. I need mm -hmm. to, you know, I need to talk to people. I'm just that kind of a person. But introverts, like, they do enjoy significant time by themselves. And to go out and, you know, out in, in network and, you know, all the events, um, that takes a lot of out of, of out of someone. So what is, like, the what's one piece of advice that you could give someone that isn't introverted, that has a hard time, you know, networking and doing the thing, right? Doing, uh, doing the thing that is going to help you find investors, attract investors, find deals, deal flow, and all the things that are very important to real estate. Take the first step. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It might not, you might not get a connection right off the bat, but you have to keep doing it. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. I got on a stage last week and I, Woo! that yeah. was, uh, <laughs> you, you should have seen the, the battle going on in my head. Oh, but, but the pictures were beautiful because guess what? You. No one knows what's going on in your head. No, <laughs> but you have to take the first step. You have to take a chance. And, and what I've realized is that it is so amazing what you can do when you give your yourself a chance to do it and not be afraid of doing it. I love it. I love it. Same question. What do you love about real estate? I don't want to give like the exact same answer. I'm actually an extrovert, so I don't have the introverted part. But yeah, that would be be part of it is building those relationships and getting to know people. So because I am a psychotherapist, I happen to really enjoy getting deep. I don't like sur surface conversation. I want to know who you are and what you stand for and what your values are. And there are so many times that you can get together with other people and you learn about who they are rather than just what they do. Is there like a natural uh, conversation flow that you follow? Like, you know, ask this question and that hits the button or, you know, kind of like what's what what would from a psychotherapist perspective, uh, what are the what's the natural questions that you would ask someone to kind of like get them to open up? Right. Because it's easier for me if someone else has opened up. Yes. Right. Yeah. And that's true. So in my psychotherapy situation, it's a little bit different because people sit down and I say, so what brought you into the office? <laughs> Whereas with other with uh, people. Fix me. Yeah. Fix me. <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> fix me. Help. Can you what fix, do I do? Can you fix me? Yes. <laughs> I hear that a lot. But outside of that, it's a little bit different. I can't just be like, hey, like, why are you here? Um, I have to then instead put on a little bit of a different hat. And you're right, sharing your own personal story can really help. And ah, sometimes I do okay. that in, in my psychotherapy office too. Um, if somebody, if I can tell that they have something that they're wanting to share and I have a similar experience, I will share it because then they open up more. Wow. So I would wow. do that in, in real life too. Yeah, relationships, people, now, what is the toughest thing about real estate from your perspective or something that you really, well, you, we talked about the getting out there and networking, but you know, let's talk about real estate itself. What, what do you think is the toughest? For me personally right now is the physicality of it. Mm. Um, I'm not in a place where I need to be yet. We'll be there soon, I'm working mm. on it. So she's the one who has had to do the um, all the work. Mm -hmm. So I help where I can. I just know my limits right now, and that's that's for me. But that's yeah. temporary. Yeah. Um, what it will be down the road, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> Good. One thing at a time. All right. Dealing with tenants. Mm. <clears throat> dealing with problem tenants the good tenants are great yeah those, those ones i'm like i don't care what your rent is i'm keeping yeah. you yeah. um but the difficult tenants that you uh inherit mm, <laughs> from previous owners well you... uh, often people hear uh all the 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 good stuff about real estate 
right? But you know that is that that, that is a reality. There mm-hmm. is, there's going to be someone that maybe doesn't resonate with you or they're problematic. Um, and so what how, what's your strategy behind that? Using other supports, definitely. Um, yesterday, I had an interesting situation where I opened a door and I turned around and cried. Wow. Um, from just visually what I saw happening oh, inside the unit. Boy. Um, but that's where you then turn to supports. Uh, I had some other investors with me. I also, because I'm in the psychotherapy field, I know who to call and uh, and what to do with those things. Wow. So having support is very important. Yeah. And, you know, that's such a good point, right? You, in every business, there's always going to be some nasty person somewhere. I mean, there's probably someone right now, um, you know, breaking the window of a Walmart, for example, right? And you have these nasty, nasty people everywhere. You, you're going to have someone that is problematic and you can actually move all the way across the world and there's someone is, there's always going to be someone, a nasty neighbor, a nasty person, a nasty coworker, a nasty tenant. And, um, you know, I think people, you should, it, it's part of the business, mm-hmm. I think. And, and there's a cost of doing business. I, I think your background in, in uh, dealing with people, it's all, it's an asset, right? Because then you can be more compassionate and, and, you know, they're just people at the end of the day, everyone's just everybody just worried about their little patch of existence. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you're, you're going to see that stuff. So I, you know, I, I commend you guys, you know, and now I want to know about this deal. How did it all come about? And, and, uh, what, what went into it, uh, all the ups and downs. And I want to hear, I want, first of all, your latest acquisition, how many units? 11, 11 units. Congratulations. Let's go. Uh, and uh, that's exciting. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's exciting. And so, how did you find it? Who found it? And uh, you know, kind of like, how did you negotiate it? And, and and all of that stuff. So believe it or not, I found it on MLS. Just uh, sitting there. Yeah, just sitting there. <laughs> and uh, again, some person in 2019 told me, you know, if something's been sitting there for a few months, go in and see how low you can get it. So I was like. 11 units in Ontario. I wonder if I can get it under a million. Wow. Yeah, so I did. I went in and offered uh, under a million dollars and they insisted it had to be over a million. And I was like, all right. They just said it needs to be a million and one. (laughs) They said over a million, they did not specify. And so I told them, I said, okay, keep the property. So that was uh, almost a year ago. I love this because everyone just wants to jump. You know, and sometimes you just gotta let the let the property sit for a little bit, and and uh, did they come to you? No, they no, actually they did end up coming back and seeing if I was still interested. Um, but at that time, I was still like, no, thanks. But Hard then, to get. but then I came along. <laughs> so when she started the journey of real estate, I wasn't ready, and if I'm not ready, I know. It doesn't matter what I do, ain't gonna work. I have to be ready. So uh, about a year ago, um, I was finally ready. And it's like, okay, let's do some walkthrough, see what's out there. And lo and behold, it was back on the market. So I said to her, I said, let's go have a look. And the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, we ended up putting in another yes. offer. And uh, and yeah, we ended up obtaining that. And uh had some fun with trying to close it because there was some issues. They had started doing some um, environmental. Mm. They did an environmental phase one, but there were some gaps in the report. Mm. Uh, so we were like, we need an environmental phase two. Uh, they wanted me to pay for it and put it under their name. And I said, no, no. if I pay for it, it goes under my name. Wow. Uh, so they ended up paying for it so that they could have it under their own names. And uh, yeah, so they, they were clear. maybe uh, they were they were maybe uh, concerned that you may maybe not you won't you won't close mm-hmm. and then they would have to go through the same process with, mm-hmm. process with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Okay, but it passed. It was yeah. fine. Yeah, everything went well. So from the time that you saw the property the first time mm-hmm. to the to actually getting uh, the keys, mm-hmm. 
How long was that? Nine months. Woo! I love it. <laughs> it I, those are that's music to my ears because it means that number one, you took your time. Mm-hmm. Um, you held the position of control, so mm-hmm. you had power in terms of negotiating power. And you know, sometimes people relinquish their control by just jumping in too early or being too eager or removing their conditions too too early, where they're just kind of like flying by the seat of their pants, uh, and then they lose that control. But it looks like you, you know, over the over nine months, you guys uh, kept your control. What was the hardest thing about bringing this to the finish line? There was a lot of difficult things, actually. Um, I don't know how many of them to get into because there were like a lot of things. Like a lot of things have to line up, especially near the end. Um, so we were trying to, you know, figure out insurance, figure out where the mortgage was coming from, the down payment. We were trying to figure everything out, um, how much we would need for closing costs, not just for the down payment, but everything else. Um, we knew that this uh, property actually wasn't going to cash flow immediately. So we wanted to have a little bit of extra money in the for, bank. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the negative cash flow. Um, we also are taking this property and taking the two commercial units and turning them into professional offices. So we needed to get quotes for construction. We needed to find out if the city would allow us to to put in offices. There was a lot of things we had to figure out and try to figure out how much it was going to cost. And so that's interesting. So it, it it comes with two commercial units at the you know I guess it's mixed use mm-hmm. and mixed use property. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so you got two com- uh, two commercials, mm-hmm. two commercial units. And what what gave you this idea that you want to do professional offices? Is it like a co working space? Is that what you want to yeah, do? Yeah. So okay. I'm a psychotherapist, and I've had a couple of different offices, and we just rent the offices by the room in a building. And I was like, so when I saw this building, I thought this is perfect location. In fact, I'm going to be moving my office into there. But I was like, this is great because it's between two places. I'm like, I can pull clients from both places. And I'm like, I talked to some friends who also have um, their own offices and they were like, I would love that location. Yes. Like, let me know when those are ready. And I think you are in alignment with where people are going to be. Uh, first of all, the traditional office space, really not necessary. Uh, so much space, right? I think there's always a need for office, but, you know, people are working from home more. Uh, but now people have been working from home for four years and people kind of are realizing it's not all that. <laughs> I mean, you're on a Zoom call, you got your kids jumping on you, you know what I mean? Uh, throwing, uh, you know, food at you while you're on Zoom. and Dog and, uh, needs to be let out. And then you can't really be uh, productive at home. Um, some people can, but like, oh, let me just do the laundry. Uh, you get back to your computer. Ah, let me just get prep dinner. Let me just get some groceries, let me do some cleaning. And by the time you're done, you haven't done anything, really. And so I think uh, this co-working space spaces, I think are really in alignment where people are now, where they're kind of getting tired of the working from home, but they really don't want to go back to like a traditional office, nine to five, you know, uh, you know, five days a week. They kind of need something in between where it's just like, you know what, let me just get like three hours of work somewhere where my kids are not jumping all over me, you mm-hmm. know? And um, I, lo- I love that. I love that. So what, like, how did you, because there's there's obviously some some research that has to go, go into it and how you're going to put together this business. So, and I think that's a really good idea. There's a lot of commercial space uh, that are just sitting vacant. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, there's just no need for, uh, you know, little trinkets or whatever to sell. But I think this is a good, this will be a good idea for a lot of people. And so where did you do the research? How did you figure this out? Do you have it all uh, figured out? And what's going to be the process? Yeah, so I've just kind of like taken what I've seen and repeated it. Is there like a software, like a booking software that you have or that you looked into? No. So what um, what the intention for probably all the office spaces will be to rent it out to one person. So like for myself as a psychotherapist, I'll have like one office space and that will be my office. Nice. And then somebody in the next room over, they'll have some other job that they do. Nice. And how many offices are you going to have? That's a good question. Um, So right now we're looking at putting seven offices in those two spaces. 
Um, we're hoping to eventually be able to take more of the building and do more offices. So you got seven offices. There's going to be like a front desk and everybody yes. kind of shares. Is it like a membership that someone has to get or? No, no membership. So we're just going to have somebody who is at the um, office at the front to just direct people. Yeah. But they don't have to book anything or do nice. any of that stuff because there are so many systems that exist already. Yeah. Um, I use something called the Jane app. Mm, and Jane it, app. Yeah, mm. it tracks everything. It tracks all of my clients. It tracks like how much HST I have to pay back. It tracks... Um, repeat clients and who ah. needs to be booked in again. It does so much stuff. So I love it. So tell me about that moment when you guys got the call. I don't know if it was a call from the lawyer or an email. Could have been an email. And it was, we closed this deal, right? And you worked on it for nine months. Uh, what was that moment like? I was still in a moment of panic because I still was like, do we have everything together? Like, because when they, when you get the call that it's been closed, you're like, okay, is the money in the bank? Because honestly, when we got that call, it was 5 p.m. was the end of the day. I don't know why. It, it's always the same. It's like, I've, it's always like at the end of the day. On and, a Friday. Yeah, on a Friday. And it's always the same. But, but uh, you got that call. And uh, how did it feel? Like I said, it's still like, it was surreal, right? Like it didn't quite sink in. You always have that moment of uh, denial. Like, did this really happen? And so like I messaged her to let her know. And she's like, are you sure? Like it, it actually closed. <laughs> yes, it actually closed. It's ours. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my wife and I, we have a theme song. You know, every time we close a deal, we have a, a little theme song. And when she comes into my office playing the th theme song, I know we just closed the deal. So it's it's really it's really quite something. That's an awesome idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, look, guys, you, I mean, the time just flew by. Yes. Look at that. Yes. And you guys are incredible. Uh, and, um, you know, look out real estate world because uh, you got two uh, powerhouses here. I want to know what inspires you. What's a mantra or a quote that you, you know, was it maybe a turning point for you or, were, you know, something that really inspires you? I don't know if this re really is a quote, um, but I'm tired of looking through the looking glass at people living the life that I want. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah, don't maybe be a spectator. Not, no, I want to be the, the leading lady in my own life. So, wow. yes, real estate is going to give me that. I love that. Growing up as a teenager, I had quotes all over my wall. Mm -hmm. So some people had posters of boys. I had quotes. The only one that stuck with me was, defer not till tomorrow to be wise, for tomorrow's sun may never rise. Wow. Mm, nice. Yeah. Don't wait for tomorrow when you can do it today. Mm-hmm. I love it. Action takers. Uh, was this fun? It was, it was great. amazing. Thank <laughs> Look, you. All of the information is going to be down below, guys. Uh, if you want to get any information from our friends here, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And we will see you soon. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Woo! Let's go. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Wealth Genius Podcast. If you have a question or comment about something you heard today, reach out to The Godfather via social media or email him anytime. All that information is in the show notes. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode of the Wealth Genius Podcast. The Wealth Genius Podcast. Until next time, see you at the top.